This is the final video from the series of array formula tutorials. The previous video provided an introduction to arrays and array formulas and also presented some basic examples to whet your appetite. This video continues the saga and provides many useful examples that further demonstrate the power of this feature, array formulas. I have selected certain examples to provide a good assortment of various uses for array formulas. So in this video we are going to cover how to sum a range that contains errors, how to sum the nth largest values in a range, then we are going to talk about how to compute an average that excludes zeros, and how to count the number of differences in two ranges. And finally, we are going to talk about how to return the last value in a column. So let's look at an example to understand how to sum up a range that contains errors. Let's say we would like to sum column I, which contains salary data of these employees. And due to reasons, there are certain errors in this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in an equal to sign, then I'm going to type in sum, then open bracket, and then I'm going to use a formula called if error. So it's just I F E R R O R. And what this does is it returns the value if the expression is not an error, but if it returns true that means the expression is an error and then click on open bracket go ahead select the entire range of data which you would like to sum and then comma the next expression is asking you what would you like to do if the value is an error so I'm going to open inverted comma and then I'm going to close inverted comma and then I'm going to close the bracket. And then finally I'm going to close the bracket of the function sum. Then what you do is you press control shift enter on your keyboard all at once so that it is an array formula. If you don't do that, then this formula will not work. So notice, even though this particular range contains error values, it has still summed up the salary of the employees. So in order to check it, let me just put a filter to this and I'm going to go ahead, deselect this range and I'm simply going to select only the visible cells and notice the sum is 57,000 and that's exactly what our formula has generated. Let's say we have this particular data which consists of salary data of employees of a company and we would like to know who are the top 10 earners. Not just that, we would like to know what is the summation of their salary. That means we would like to know the summation of top 10 salary packages. So I've sorted this data in ascending order, which is from smallest to largest salaries. And before we jump into the formula, let me just show you what should be the actual answer. And it should be 254,625, which is the sum of top 10 salary packages. The count is 10, so you can tell. So now go ahead, type in an equal to sign, type in sum, open bracket, then type in the function large, L-A-R-G-E, because we want to know the top 10 as opposed to bottom 10. If it was bottom, then you would be using the formula small. Then open bracket, go ahead and select the entire range for the syntax array. This is the cell range, data range, then comma, this is the catch, K. This is where we need to identify the position. So we're going to use two functions here. 
The first one is row and the second one is indirect. So the function row, go ahead type that in, then open bracket. When we use the function row, we want to return the row number of a reference. So in reference syntax, go ahead type in indirect. So for those of you who are not familiar with the function indirect, this returns the reference specified by a text string. So this means if I use the function indirect and in in syntax, I type in, in inverted commas B1. So it's going to return the data which exists in cell B1. In this case, we would like to find out where my top 10 salary packages exist in this range. So I'm going to type in an inverted comma. 1 is to 10, which is the top 10. And then I'm going to close the inverted comma. I'm going to close this bracket for the indirect function. Then I'm going to close the bracket for the function row and large and finally for the function sum. So once you're done with that, go ahead, press Control Shift Enter at the same time because if you don't do that, then this formula is not going to work. Once you do that, notice it has generated the summation of top 10 salary packages. So in a sense, the function large is evaluated 10 times, each time with a different second argument. So from 1, 2, 3, and until 10. And the results of these calculations are stored in a new array. And that array is used as the argument for the function sum. Let's learn how to calculate average excluding zeros. So we have this data set which contains student marks for a particular subject and we would like to determine the average of the entire class but we know that these two students Pinky and Surabi have left the school so it does not make sense to include their marks in the average score so we would like to determine the average excluding zeros so before we jump into that let me show you what the normal average is this is 30.7 the marks of all seven students including Pinky and Surabi now let's go ahead and calculate the average using an array formula type in an equal to sign type in average then open bracket then type in the if condition because that is what we are going to use to determine where the value 0 do not appear in the data range and then open bracket and then go ahead and select the entire data range which will be column B and then this should not equal to 0 so type in the not equal to sign and type in 0 comma if this is true then what is it that you would like to do I would like to take the average of this data range so I'm selecting that and then I'm going to close the bracket for both the functions and I'm going to hit control shift enter once I do that notice what is the average it is 43 it would be higher because it has excluded these two marks although average if function would suffice but I'm showing you this for compatibility purposes in Excel 2007 because that is not available in Excel 2007 average if function is available in Excel 2010 Now let's learn how to count the number of differences in two data ranges. Notice that we are going to learn how to count as opposed to sum the differences in two ranges. So we are going to use the array formula to compare the corresponding values in two ranges 
and gather the number of differences in the two ranges. If the contents of the two ranges are identical, then the formula will return zero. So let's say this is our range one and this is our range two. Currently both the ranges are identical, but let me just go ahead and type a zero in cell C4. So now there is one difference in both the ranges, which is cell A4 is not equal to cell C4. So go ahead, type in an equal to sign, type in sum, open bracket, then type in the formula if, open bracket. The first syntax is logical test. So we would like to test the data in column A, which is from cell A1 through A7. Is it equal to the data in column C, which is from C1 through C7, comma, what happens if the condition is true? So we would like a zero to appear. And if the condition is false, then it should sum to one. And close bracket, and then close bracket for the sum function as well. And then do not just simply hit enter, press control shift enter at once. Notice it has generated a value of one because we know there is one difference in this data range. If we go ahead and select this entire data range and hit delete, it would generate a value of five. That is because in column A, there are two values which are already zero. Had these values been equal to, let's say 20 and 25, then number of differences in both the ranges would increase to seven because that equates to the total number of values in a particular data range. Suppose that you have a worksheet and you would like to grab the latest and the last value generated in a particular column because you know that column is being updated on a daily basis. So we need to use an array formula because there could be empty cells in that particular column. If there are no empty cells, then it is not necessary to use an array formula. But if there are empty cells in a particular column and you would like to grab the last and the most updated value from that column, you need to use an array formula. So let's say this is our column and we would like to grab the last value and it acts as an input for other formulas in the worksheet. So how can you grab that? So go ahead, type in an equal to sign, type in index. So we're going to use a couple of formulas here. The first one is index, then max, row, so type an index because that will give us the reference of the cell at the intersection of a particular row or column. Open bracket. What is our array? Our array is this entire column A, comma, row number. So we're going to use the function max to determine the row number. And in that, again, we're going to use the function row and the reference would be column A, close bracket, and we're going to times it by itself, which is column A, but we do not want it to equal to an empty cell, so it should not equal to an empty cell and then close bracket. So what this is doing is it is determining the max value from this column provided that there are no empty cells so just above the empty cells and then close bracket again for the index function and then go ahead press control shift enter so that this formula works and notice it has generated the value of 60 
And let's say I go ahead and type in a value in cell A9 and hit enter. Notice this particular function has updated and it is giving me a value of 50 because that's the last value in this column. So this is how Array Formula simplifies your daily work and simplifies the formulas and cuts many intermediary steps. Hope this was useful. This video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomath.com. Thank you.